Welcome back to Inside Out. If you're just joining us, we are talking today about hope. I have joining with me the beautiful Lorena Joy Stewart, and we have our guests with us today. We've got Mark G in the house. How are you doing, Mark? I'm doing absolutely unbelievable. Thank you for having me. Great. Well, I know your story of hope, and you've talked to me before. It's been inspiring to me to learn about how you grew up mm -hmm. and to learn that you really didn't have an ideal uh family life growing up. You went through some hard times. So take us on that journey with you. Uh, six, seven years old, what was your life like? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, at the age of six, you know, I, uh, I went into foster homes and wow. uh, I spent uh, six years with one family. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, there was a situation that happened in their family that led to some hard times and therefore led the father to drinking. Wow. And uh, being a foster kid, you know, a lot of times people don't know how to adapt to another child that's really not their own, right? Yeah. So his reactions were a lot different towards me and they became physical. Wow. Um, and then back then, because you know, I'm, I'm a little bit older, back then Children's Aid was quite young in its development. Mm -hmm. So they really didn't have the understanding on uh, you know, how to work with the kids and how mm -hmm. to work with the families and educate them on how to go through those processes. So you had a circumstance where yes. you were treated differently than the other children. Yes. There was some physical abuse evolved, involved. It wasn't your own family. So what did what did you do from there? Did you go to a different home? Um, and, and and what 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 ended up happening? Did you end up with a family? Well, I ended up they they ended up separating the, the mm -hmm. mother and father. And then my father didn't let me get adopted by the mother, who who truly did love me. Mm -hmm. um, and then so because of that situation. My father ended up taking me for three months. Um, he wanted to take me for a long time, but just like when he gave me up originally, he wasn't really prepared uh, to, to take care of me mm -hmm. at that time. Being a truck driver, being on the road, right. he wasn't around. And, and children wow. need their parents to be around. Absolutely. Right. Uh, so you found and yourself again without a father back That's in right. the foster care system? Absolutely. So they, I was still a part of the foster care system when I was going through that. And then what they did was they sent me, I ran away. There was a, a situation that happened inside my family um, that was that I, I keep pretty private because it's not mine to share right, right. Um, and it, it affected uh, me pretty deeply so I ran away uh, mm -hmm. and then the children and how day, old were you when you I ran was 12. away 12 wow. years old yeah so wow. then they put wow. me back into homes but at Can't the age of 12 that. how many how many parents are, are looking for the younger kids not the yeah. older kids yeah how many parents at that time want to adopt a child that has already been through a tough life wow. so you know the abandonment continues right yeah. So you really had more of a reason to be in despair yes. at that point, uh, you know. But I look at you now, and you're giving hope to people. I, could you even imagine? Lorena? I couldn't imagine. How how did you get yourself from out of the place of despair and hopelessness? Because that's a pretty hopeless place to be. You know, it, it was a long journey. I think I started. Um, one thing I was blessed with was I lived with my grandma to the age of six. Mm -hmm. So between the age of three and six, and you start cognitive ability at the age of five. So I started to have cognitive ability and then I understood her love. Mm, so right. I believe that I've continued with that love the rest of my life. Wow. She's still the favorite person in the world to me. And, and she, she passed away when I was 15 years old. But I believe her love instilled on me, which made me a better person. Mm -hmm. So as I went through those processes at the age of six, um, you know, I was literally sat down by my sister and said, Grandma and Grandpa can't take care of you they're getting older and I'm ADHD. So I'm a very hyper person. So that's another thing that really felt, I mean, you could have used that as an excuse to Absolutely. really fall into that despair. So ADHD, hmm. yep. your sister sits you down at six yes. and tells you that you have to leave. Well, she actually asked me if I would. She put it in a very loving wow. way. Um, and, and I remember it and I said, I would do anything for grandma. Wow. And so I did. Wow. And, you know, I look at my life and I'm so grateful that I went through what I went through. Wow. I'm so blessed for that opportunity. Now, on the other side of hope is hopelessness, mm -hmm. right? So you have to train that, that mindset to understand that there is hope. So with kids that are going through that thing, they, through that hopelessness, they have to find something to grab onto that brings them hope. So you were saying that that hope for you was that love of your grandmother. Mm. Yes. And that that actually gave you hope throughout all that time. Now, I thought it was interesting. 15 years old, you told me, you left the foster care system. Yes. Wow. And where did you end up at that point? Because I thought this was I, really interesting. I, I, I moved out on my own. Now, they still gave me $600 a month to take care of me. Like, they, they paid room and board for the last couple of years because I, I didn't have a family to go to after mm -hmm. the age of 13. 
So, and going through group homes and stuff like that because nobody would, you know, take a child with trouble. Yeah. Um, so I literally launched a landscaping company at 15. So I dropped out of high school wow. and started cutting grass. It was, I mean, I yeah. had done it, right? I knew how to cut grass. Yeah. You know, so I literally cut grass, shovel snow because I'm from Canada. And uh, that really helped me make that extra money that I needed to make. And then at 17, I, uh, I went to Vancouver. So you did yeah. not let yourself fall into hopelessness. You didn't let yourself mm -hmm. become a victim of your circumstances because, you know, I grew up, my parents had a lot, a lot of foster kids when I was growing up. Wow. We had hundreds of foster kids. And the one thing that I saw was there were certain kids that let their circumstances yes. define who they were. Mm -hmm. And those who let their circumstances define them became victims. Yes, but, and they but fell into this fooled. horrible cycle. Mm -hmm. Don't be fooled. I, I was in a horrible you cycle. You were? Okay. Absolutely. At the age of, I mean, when you're not taught how to really understand yourself and understand mm -hmm. the world around you, mm -hmm. you know, you're kind of lost, right? Yeah. So I became an addict, and at the age of 20, I went to rehab. Wow. You know, so I smoked a lot of drugs, and I did a lot of bad stuff, and I drank a lot. And, you know, at 13, I went through a lot of charges and stuff. And one of the things that, for me, is I never, jail is very scary to me. Yeah. You know, I, because I'm a very free person. I want to be mm -hmm. free. So if you lock me into something... It's very scary. So to me, that's kind of what stopped me from continuing. That was your to motivation. Yeah. I did not want to be There's locked a, away. I did not want to be behind bars <laughs> right. and not have the opportunity. Um, and then there was a guy, uh, Chris, who stepped into my life and took me to, to camps at the age of 12 and 13 as I was going through the toughest times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we went horseback riding for a couple of weeks, went rock climbing for a week, and they were back to back. So, and he literally, he was the guy that actually restrained me in the group home. Wow. You know, and out of love. Mm -hmm. You know, and so... For me to, to recognize it was only because he spoke truth to me. And I believe that. I, I believe if we speak truth to people and we speak truth to ourselves, mm -hmm. we can change our mindset. So mm -hmm. I love what you're saying. So the message that I'm getting from you is really one of love and truth. Yeah. And those are the things yeah. that gave you hope in those, in those times Absolutely. of despair that kept you from falling into total despair where you, you became a total victim of your circumstances despite your hard times. So just to recap, mm -hmm. You grew up, you had ADHD, you had yes. that label on you. You were given up by your grandmother. Multiple families well, as well. And then yes. you were in foster care on and off. You left the foster care system at 15. You yes. became an addict. You know, you had everything going against you. And what is so incredible to me is you are actually inspiring many, many people to hope. And I'm so excited to find out how you're doing that when we come back. So everybody stick with us because we're gonna find how, out about how Mark made his mess into a message for the world.